everybody. This is Ariel, the Client Service Director of Dental Nachos. And we are going to get started with the Q&A shortly. If you have any questions, you can email them to ariel at dentalnachos.com or salsa at dentalnachos.com or feel free to text them to 267-896-4886. Dr. Nacho will be on shortly. Okay, guys. Thanks for being on here with me. It is a day. I don't think we need to, we can dispense with the formalities of the WEDs and THR. THURS can't spell in this COVID crisis. So it just seems like one long day. Uh, my name is Paul, Dr. Nacho Goodman. We've been doing this every day at 3.30. We have special guests at times. We do try to deliver to you guys some updated information that we know. None of it's studies. A lot of this is stories. It's a time for us to talk. Uh, try to have some fun during all of this. We give out some prizes. My team will give out some prizes. I work on some of my COVID crisis uh, material. Uh, one of my jokes for today is uh, Peloton should come up with a new commercial. If the world's going to end, you might as well look good while it's happening. Buy yourself a Peloton. So if somebody can get that to Peloton, maybe they would want to use that uh, for one of their ads. And it's taken me 10 days. I'm ashamed of myself. This has happened, but I've come up with the Krebs cycle with a C, the COVID Krebs cycle. And I think it's a good um, sort of theme because there's so many S words in the COVID Krebs cycle. I'll take a picture of these guys there. And the S words that we have, shock, safety, sanity, stress, strategy, and sharing. And you go through all these and the middle is small solutions. So I think I've been through some situations personally where it was very shocking, not good things have happened, tragic things have happened, and I had to move forward. So now we're talking about moving forward, small solutions. Just today, we had one of our key resources and sponsors, Brant from Mouthwash. They have a cool teledentistry platform. There's a number of them out there. The teledentistry platform through Mouthwash is one that you can use to do live consults. You can actually bill for limited oral exams, depending on your state. I'm not here as a state board representative, but some states you could bill for limited oral exams, or maybe you're not going to bill, but just document that you did them. There's a teledentistry code associated with it. You can also, uh, a lot of your patients are sitting at home. Maybe you can get together with them on one of these platforms and talk about a big case that you're going to do when you guys come back into the office. So this is our COVID Krebs cycle, uh, the S words, safety, shock, safety, sanity, stress, strategy, sharing, and small solutions. So we'll talk about some small solutions uh, for us today. So uh, I'm going to look at any questions from our poll, Ariel or Amanda, that I could start with that you guys had from the past. Not I have my little sheet here. Sure, I have the poll pulled up. Um, I'm gonna look at one, it. Go ahead. One question that I think is a great question is, are banks still processing loans? Good question. I would wanna know that too. One of my talking tips, uh, when people ask you a question, weird question, not so smart question, difficult question, good question, I wanna know that too. Right now, it seems as if they are, from my reports from uh, Rob Montgomery, dental, my dental-focused amigo and friend, but it seems like there's a chance that that could stop. I'm just using my human brain to think that I'm a practice transition broker. I have deals that were supposed to close. Is the bank's going to be closing these deals on April 30th? One recommendation I would have is to call the bank, get in touch with them, email with them, stay connected with people. I was on an amazing pod. I want to tell the story for a minute because this was great. So I don't know if you guys have, know who Lincoln Harris is. I mean, maybe we can ask, does anyone know who Lincoln Harris is on the chat? Raise your hand if you're a member of his Facebook group, RIPE. So I've made your life better by just uh, telling you to join RIPE, RIPE. It's 70,000 plus members talking about high level clinical dentistry. So Lincoln came to Philadelphia last year. I got a chance to meet him. We had Margarita Alves. We saw some historic stuff. And we had a podcast like so Lincoln uh, faced something like this in 2013 in Australia. There was a massive flood and his office had to be shut down and he talked about strategies to survive and he said he did things that he would not do again. He was too emotional about certain things. He would try to make sure he could maintain his expenses early. Sometimes he said he was too emotionally attached to his team. There's resources out there. Um, what I'm going through is a practice owner right now. Uh, if you want to think of a practice as an entity that we need to get to survive, and we need to keep it afloat like a ship. Your employees have the opportunity to get a lifeline, a life preserver with unemployment. The dental practice owner does not. So if you're sitting out there, we're all in this together, W-A-I-T-T. -T. You can put some of this stuff in the comments. 
We're all in this together. So if you think of the dental practice owner like me and my brother, we have no lifeline of unemployment for people to pay us with the, with the ship shut down or the I'll be calling us a dental office beach bar to think about the summer. Uh, and what can we do to survive and how do we pay these expenses? So it's incredibly challenging. And Lincoln was sharing that if he was going through this again, which they are too, that he would be most, the most important focus he would have would be getting the office to survive because the office provides a lot for everyone and employees are able to use unemployment as a lifeline. What are we going to use to pay our rent, to pay our mortgages, to pay our CBC loans, to pay all the things we have to do? It's really challenging. Mrs. Nacho asked, why don't they give unemployment to dental practice owners? And I thought that was a good question. I don't know why. They don't seem to have anything. Dental practice owners at this time, so when just managing people's expectations, safety, sanity, stress, small solutions, dental practice owner, not only has their income been turned off, okay, so for the first time in history that I can think of, they have made it so that you can't do dentistry in certain states. So that's what we do. Those are our services. Now, the employees can use unemployment as a lifeline. The dental practice owner, not only do they not have income coming in, they have to figure out a way to go below zero so that they can keep the office afloat. And it doesn't mean they may have, some may have prepared well for this. Not, not that anyone could have thought there was a pandemic coming. I, I don't blame dental school for this. Watch this. I'm not going to blame you, dental school. I don't blame you, dental school, for not teaching us how to survive a pandemic, right? So mark it down. I'm not blaming dental school for not teaching us how to survive a pandemic. Not your fault. Some, some basic business skills would have been nice, some patient communication skills. Uh, how to not, you know, spending some of our time not spending uh, three hours to make a bite rim, that might have been a waste of time, but you did not, it was not up to you to tell us how to survive a pandemic, and that's where we are right now. And you just have to look at it from everyone's angle, and it's very, very difficult. But just remember, as Rob said yesterday on our podcast, we did an amazing podcast. We turned it around in one day. My team will drop that link in there. We did this yesterday about Rob did top 10 things to think about during this COVID crisis, but he kept saying, staying alive is important personally and professionally. Avail yourself of all resources that you have to stay alive. So really good question uh, there. Anyone, um, uh, any other questions there, Amanda or Ariel, on your guys' end from the poll or otherwise? Uh, yes, a few about unemployment. The main one was, should my staff be on unemployment now? So there's, it seems like right now, and I am not, we, we, uh, Kara Kelly, who's an awesome resource, you can tag her, you can tag Kara Kelly, tag Rob Montgomery, tag Anna Haslinski. I encourage you to consult with a professional and ask them what is best for your situation. So just like B1 teeth might not be the best for an 80 year old, like looks a little weird, pop pop, that your teeth are the color of a toilet bowl, but maybe they're not, maybe they're the right fit for someone who's a 25 year old model. So you want to find the right fit for you, but I'll just share with you the things I'm thinking about is unemployment is there for people to use as a lifeline. From what I've been reading about this bill, I am not, you know, someone who is a bill expert, that there's options that employers have until April 2nd to A, have their team be laid off and go on unemployment, laid off and go on unemployment, uh, furloughed where they're, they can collect unemployment, there's certain benefits the employer still has to pay and hope that there is a two week PTO reimbursement to the employer from the government. One of the challenges here, if you're a hygienist, dental associate, dental assistant sitting there is, if the office has been shut down for two weeks, where does the income in, come into this office for the, the owner to pay these two weeks of employment? Is that gonna come in the form of SBA, small business administration loans? Is it gonna come in government loans? There's a lot of JFO just find out here that's happening today. This is a big day in the movie where things are transpiring. So it looks like you can do unemployment, lay off team members, tell them to collect unemployment, wait for your beach bar to return and see what happens when it returns. Furlough where some benefits are still paid and you're waiting to see what the government does. It's incredibly complex, incredibly challenging. I don't know the right answer. Really difficult. I encourage you to consult with a, a professional about that. Really good question. Um, I want to look at this poll as we're talking here. Uh, has anyone, yesterday we all asked, um, it said the bill appears to skip dentistry. Have you seen or heard otherwise? Yeah, it, it doesn't seem, I, I, I think my, in, my thought process was that the ADA was looking to have dentists be exempt from uh, paying that PTO since they wouldn't have the dollars to do it since their offices have been shut down. And I think it's still in a wait and see.
Um, I think someone muted. Okay, perfect. Uh, being passed, not being passed. I think we have to just keep an eye on the news. And now's the time. You're in a scenario. It's not about spending zero dollars. Now's the time to invest in talking to an employment attorney who can guide you, to talking to your tax professional who can guide you. You don't want to be making giant decisions without guidance out there. Um, I want to check on this poll here for a second, uh, the Zoom chat. If you guys have any questions, you can drop those into the Zoom chat. Has anyone tried, I want to share with you guys out there, has anyone used the teledentistry platform before this because they weren't preparing for the coronavirus, they just wanted to be kind of cool and use teledentistry. Feel free to ask and share if that's happened to you. And Amanda, tag me one more time in this poll, if you don't mind, because I just um, missing your tag. I think it got swept up here. Okay, perfect. So I know I, I got it here, Amanda. So a couple common questions out there. Can I get unemployment as a 1099? My instinct, the answer to that is no, you cannot, but you need to check with your tax professional. This is an example. Over the years, Dennis has said it's no big deal if I'm a 1099 or not, but now if you're not a W-2 employee, that lifeline may be challenging if you're a 1099 employee. If you are misclassified, I don't know if now is the time that you're going to be able to try to claw back and do that, but that's something you would ask your tax professional. That's been a common question. Um, I have a good one I want to ask here, but did anyone interject anything while I was talking there, Amanda or Ariel, since then? No. Okay, cool. So... There's only one thing, and I got to keep saying this over and over and over again. And I just had a call with, I just talked to one of my um, uh, good friends before this. There's only one thing that we need to be thinking about, that we need to be worried about, that we need to be making noise about, that we need to be asking about. Does anyone know what this one thing is for us? So let's just say most dental offices are shut down. Most dental offices are shut down to everything except emergency care, acute emergencies, not my tooth is sensitive, life-threatening emergencies, facial swellings things of that nature, follow the ADA regulations for that. But what is the thing that we need to be most concerned about today, tomorrow, and the next day to get back to dentistry? Okay, right. And the answer is yes, from the friend I was talking to, when will our team and patients be safe? So I keep thinking this like a golf clubs. They've taken our golf clubs away. How can we get back on the course with our caddy, our teammates, and also other players in the course, our patients? So if you're sitting there feeling helpless, worry, when is my office gonna reopen? Email the CDC, email at a, the ADA, email OSHA, call them and say, I'm a dentist, I'm concerned about that. this, we are necessary for public health. Pennsylvania has basically shut down dentistry, shut down dentistry, and maybe more patients. And here, is anyone concerned that more patients will be going to the emergency room with dental care? That's been a concern. I'm concerned about that too, but I'm also concerned about more patients going to the emergency room with the coronavirus. So we have a true dilemma, no good option. So you need to be thinking about, talking about, saying the words, what is the PPE situation going to be for dentists to keep our employees safe, our patients safe, and ourselves safe? How is this virus transmitted through aerosol or not? Is it, what's the, what's the likelihood of transmitting this if one patient's having a crown prep done? Maybe it's the fastest crown prepper on this, this side of Broad Street or the other side of Broad Street, Dr. Todd Fleischman. Maybe you can prep a crown in three minutes and it takes you 30 minutes. Doesn't matter when that aerosol is put up into the air, what is the risk of the next patient breathing that in and, and transmitting the coronavirus? I hope it's low. I hope we're overreacting. I hope they find out it's not a high risk, but that's what we need to be thinking about because our procedures do this day in and day out. And a 30-year-old asymptomatic carrier on um, patient number one and a 75-year-old Patient number two can have cross-contamination that way. And furthermore, our team sitting next to us, assisting us all day. And also, um, has anyone been a dentist out there for more than six months? Has this happened to you? Uh, who has been a dentist and you've been working? Okay, this is always, this is always, you're working in your room, trying to do a class two. You're like, should have practiced being better looking and been a model. They don't have to worry about the coronavirus. You can model anywhere. But like, this is the life I live. You're doing your class two. You're doing your crown prep. And you, you feel over your shoulder. Not the hygienist rolling her eyes like Ariel. That, that's no big deal. You feel a front desk team member and they have a surprise for you. And it's never a good surprise. So they come into that room with Aracel. Are they wearing the mask? Because they used to just walk on in and put a post-it note down. We had, a, we had the post-it note system. Something not good happened. They come in, they put a post-it note down. And that means that I need to get up and go and see what's happening uh, with them. So in general, uh, that is something. Oh, thanks. Oh, nice beard. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's I, I, it's like my playoff beard. I got a I got a, I got a coronavirus beard. Not shaving until it's over. So we'll see what happens here. Maybe I'll be Derek Conover by the end of this thing. 
good question now at the PP. Any other questions from our chat right now um, on your guys' end? I have more of them. We have a, a question. When will our team and patients be safe? Uh, great question. And the scary answer is I don't know. No one knows right now. I think we need to, as I said before, make noise about this. We had Rudy who was putting together information on Dental Nacho. See if you guys can tag the post with Rudy out there. Um, he was putting as much data as he could together. We don't know. And I want to share something about N95 masks a second. So not everybody knows my background, but I did three years at a general practice residency. I loved it. I love being in the hospital. I love being a resident. Anyone who's on here who knew me from that time knew I loved everything about Albert Einstein. So we had to be fitted for N95 masks. So first of all, if you have some N95 masks, likely they're needed on the front line with the people really fighting this war. But let's just say you have some, they're not necessarily gonna keep you safe if you are not fitted. So I had to show up at this room and the person watching here from Einstein too, I did the same thing. First day, they're like, congratulations from, de congratulations from uh, graduating from dental school. We're gonna make sure you don't get tuberculosis. I'm like, wow, this has gotten serious pretty quick. And we had to be fitted for this mask because if we had to go see a patient with active tuberculosis, we had to wear an N95 mask. They're very difficult to breathe in. You definitely cannot refine your veneer preps with an N95 mask. And therefore just walking in, not breathing it in, walking out. So the N95 mask, one, you likely haven't been fitted for it. So using something could be used on the front line. And two, they're not designed for doing, doing dentistry. Um, good question there too. Uh, Someone says, question from Facebook, how, a crown, how, a crown's out and sensitive and painful to eat. Really good question. And we have my video I had with Drew and Paw Patrol. Here's what I did, the not clinical advice. This is nacho, Paul's nacho way, Paul and Jeff's nacho way. I developed the Zion sign. Do you have a problem swallowing? Do you have a problem breathing? Is there any swelling outside of your face? No, no, no. You're immediately not an acute emergency, you're an urgency. Now, crown out, painful to eat, we had painful, painful to eat and sensitive. That's an urgency. But guys and everyone watching, every day matters. So I'm living my life with this stay home, stay safe, stop the spread. So rushing in today to see that crown, it's better to rush in another day that's not today. But it's hard to weigh those two things out. We have really had our hands tied, especially in Pennsylvania, about what's elective, what's, what's, what's elective, What's um, urgent and what's emergent? And then the answer there is, I'm not sure. They're, right now they've said, make the best decision for you. But I just had a great dental notcher posting about how uh, she had taken care of some abscessed teeth, which is great. And I asked her, what PPE does Maryland want them to use? And they said, universal precautions, okay? But universal precautions with design for blood-borne pathogens. So I think it's awesome we have these dentists trying to help people, but I also really worry about these dentists and team members trying to help people. We're in this impossible situation where, yes, we're helping people on one side, but then are we spreading the disease on the other side? Where should these people be seen? In PA, they're looking for centers because in PA right now, they have the requirements of the N95 mask and the negative pressure room. And I said yesterday, I was gonna build a negative pressure room in my office, but I decided to get a nacho machine instead. I look pretty silly now. But people have enjoyed that nacho machine. I'm just kidding. We have neither of those things. But a negative pressure room is really a difficult thing to come by. And I think you may want to call your state board and say, what should I do here? And, you know, I, 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 don't, I feel conflicted. I feel conflicted on a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm also scared if we treat emergencies in the New York State metropolitan area, as soon as we open the door, thousands of patients in practice come because their dentist is closed. That will get unsafe real quick. Yes. I mean, is it, who out there is a fan of Game of Thrones? I had my White Walker Scotch. I just want to share, we're going to we have a commercial break from a company that doesn't sponsor me, but maybe one day they will, okay? Today's COVID update is sponsored by, I'm almost done with this project, Old Elk Bourbon, okay? Almost done. Look, so much gone, right? Maybe we'll, maybe Mrs. Nacho and I will finish this project. Always feels good to do something. I finished a project. So if anyone knows someone at Old Elk Bourbon, maybe they would want to sponsor our update or at least send us some free bourbon. So if you've watched Game of Thrones and you've heard of the White Walkers, we have a real White Walker situation with this, where we're not sure how many are out there. And yes, if you're in that New York City, they said last night, did anyone hear last night? They said, if you've traveled through New York, you should self-quarantine for 14 days. So how you're dealing with dental emergencies in that environment, I feel for you and I feel super conflicted. Um, I have a toothache, what do I do? First, this is my, my nacho. First of all, this is what I say. Someone has a toothache, I just break it down, okay? 
Problem swallowing, problems breathing, facial swelling, no, no, no. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like the worst pain you ever felt, one being like no big deal, what is it? It's a five, blah, blah. So then I go over, we're in this crisis. We don't know how to protect people. Here's the thing, I saw people sending out releases. Someone comes to your office with an emergency, okay, an emergency that you take care of, and then they come down with COVID two days later, nothing to do your office. Is there any chance they're gonna try to pin that on your office? Hopefully not, but how do you know? So do we have release forms? Are they worth anything? Is it about managing expectations? Are people, I believe, and I was just talking to my good friend about this, people are gonna be signing release forms when this comes back, just like they signed for paresthesia with their wisdom teeth. It's unlikely you're gonna get paresthesia, but you gotta sign anyway. It's unlikely you're gonna get COVID, but you may have to sign anyway. But these release forms have to be, be put together by attorneys and they don't, they don't make it, it's not so much that if someone has paresthesia, it's not because they signed a release, it's no big deal. It's just that their expectations have been managed. So I would tell people, this is what I say at the end of calls. This is, this is what I said for years, and this is from all my Einstein time. I have someone who has intraoral swelling. They're at home. They're not even there. They have, oh, there's some swelling inside my mouth. Send me a picture. I can't come in until Monday. It's Saturday. This is what I say. Okay, right now your dental problem looks like it's in the urgent category. If you notice any of these things, problem breathing, problem swallowing, swelling outside your face, go to the nearest emergency room. Call me immediately if it gets worse. I want you to tell me if it gets worse, call me immediately, document it, and go to the nearest emergency room. You have given them information for them to act. You've given them, and listen guys, who's dealing with this? Doctors with the coronavirus. If you don't have a certain fever or this, they're telling you to stay home and stay, and, and stay safe. And they're looking, I saw a really cool thing on CNN the other night about um, a doctor who apparently is working on a platform to manage 4,000 patients from home. They have like 400 on, it's pretty cool. Bunch of screens, think of yourself that way with the patient. Maybe look into this teledentistry platform, one through our sponsor Mouthwash, there's other ones, there's free ones, there's ones you pay for, the Mouthwash one, it sounds like you're doing no setup fee and a first free month, you might as well try it, first free month, like a, like, like a teledentistry version of a gym, somebody on this call uh, takes advantages of a lot of free first fitness classes, so maybe that's like, you know, free first month of teledentistry. So what uh, I would say is stay connected with them, talk them through it. Uh, the goal is to keep people out of the ER, but also kind of keep people out of your dental office. And it's very, very, very tricky. Um, Ariel loves free fitness classes. When will dental offices be safe for treating patients? Teamer, every state is different. State boards are issuing different guidelines. Essentially a rud rudderless SIP. Help send to the C CDC. Yeah, we're writing my favorite play. It's here, Nacho Hamilton. Everyone's fighting. Remember Hamilton and Jefferson? They did not get along. Washington probably had a lot of migraines dealing with those two people. And that was an example of how the states argued with each other were the same way with dentistry. Those are great. Uh, did anyone see this on nachos? It showed every state shut down. My nacho team, did you guys see this? I did send it to you, Amanda, for our, our update page. Uh, it shows when each state is shut down until when. And some states are like, figure it out for yourself, right? And I, I won't say those states so and keep people from there, but it does show you that some states shut down the June 15th, some May 8th, some say do, do the best job you want to do now and make your own decisions. It's really tough. I do want to share this. Here's one of my uh, jokes. Jokes, it's a true joke. Uh, there's some people out there that uh, say, uh, um, just make the best decision. Let dentists make the best decision. Everyone should make the best decision. We trust everyone to make the best decision. Well, in a crisis, that has worked precisely never times. Let me show you an example. Has anyone served ice cream cake at a four-year-old birthday party? Have you told the four-year-olds to make the, make the best decision? That wouldn't work out well. And on the other side, have you ever been a bartender at an open bar for a 44-year-old's birthday? Did people make good decisions that night? They did not make good decisions that night. Some people left their jackets places or worse. So everybody making the best decisions in the moment in a crisis has worked out precisely never times. We need light leadership, we need guidance, we need a coach to call plays. And the play that we're running today doesn't mean it's the play we have to run tomorrow. But I do wanna share with everybody, it is day 10, not day 100. And I'm just getting through today, tomorrow and the next day. I'm staying home, I'm staying safe, stopping the spread, um, following social distancing, doing things to make things less worse. Maybe we can't make it better, make things less worse on day 10. So if somebody says on nachos, what happens in six months if the government is shut, down, shut everything down? I'm not thinking about it. I'm thinking about today, tomorrow, the next day, safety, small solutions, planning. It's not gonna help your brain to think what if in six months, what you're thinking day in six months is, is meaningless. 
People are going to think we're back to normal. People might think we're all living in our basements. It's meaningless at this moment. It's about thinking about today, tomorrow, and the next day. Any other questions here from our um, uh, group over there, Ariel, Brandon? Or yes, we have um, in the Q&A, just to let you know, on the New Jersey side, not only are we mandated to close till about the 20th, but we have to supply inventory of P PPEs by five o'clock on Friday to the state. So they are actually taking inventory of what little we have seen. Also yeah. trying to connect New Jersey State Board. They don't have any protocol yet on what would be acceptable to protect us and patients once we great, reopen. Great insight there. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. So guys, I, I think we have to think at some point, what if this is really, really bad? And what if the people on the front line do need this? I, I think this reality is coming. So that's a whole nother challenge that they want us to share RPP with the frontline people. If you do go back to Game of Thrones, when they, in the last season, if they get through the first line of defense, we have a bigger problem. So I, I've seen that as well for New Jersey. Tag Jeff uh, for me in this because I've seen them doing it. I don't know who's going to round up all this PP for everyone. We did go and donate some to the hospital the other day, but that just shows how dire the situation is that the people frontline fighting this are having challenges, challenges this as well. Um, is there anything that we can do to buy now to prepare us for a HEPA filtration system? Uh, that they sell. I don't know. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen people have installed HEPA filtration systems. I think hopefully they're going to come out with guidelines and rules. I hope this happens fast. I'm worried that they're not thinking about dentistry. I'm worried that they're distracted. And I'm worried that the, the dental office closure issue is going to be extended because they're not going to think about what are the guidelines for us to get back to work. And what I want to share with people is Dentists are talking a lot about themselves going back to work, even their team. I got to get back to work. I got to take my body and put it back in my office to be a dentist. I got to get my assistants. Now, just put, to this, put aside for a second the assistant hygienist front desk safety issue. Let's just say we get them back. So it's got you and your assistant, you and your hygienist. What is going to bring the patients back? Are they going to feel confident? walking back into dental offices. And we have to be very, very concerned with this in a way that makes us act. Maybe it's in a way that makes us make documents and videos and things like that as this goes on. But we need to find out what keeps all of us safe throughout this process. Um, yeah, dentistry is being sidelined. That's the problem. I get us off the sideline. At least uh, my whole life is about being kindly annoying. I built an entire life, not not your life, my entire life about being kindly annoying. It's basically my entire thing. And we have to really go from kindly to annoying about this because if we're on the sidelines, they're not going to call us off the bench and they're going to say, oh yeah, I guess you think about Dennis. And now our office has been shut down either, even longer. I mean, Oregon is shut down until June 15th. Where is the where is the the funding for these dentists who own practices to come in just to... Even if you said to, here's what I want to share with, you know, uh, hopefully we'll get this uh, edited out to a larger audience, but one of my deep nacho thoughts, like from SNL is, forget about the dentist making income for a second. Forget about it. Forget about the dentist having any income. They have no unemployment. Let's say they have savings that they can survive on until June 15th. Let's just make that assumption. Who's going to give them money to keep their office afloat, to pay rent, to pay to keep their computers on, to pay to keep their lights on, to all those little expenses. You wanna see those expenses are? Look at, take a look at our P&L. Lots of tiny little expenses that have nothing to do with patient care and no revenue coming in. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but we need to think about that along with or after thinking about the PP because nothing happens unless we can reopen our offices um, safely. So a couple things that you can do. So we talked about this here. So we move from shock safety to small solutions. So I'm moving out of shock. I don't know if other people are. We're going to be moving to safety. Sometimes I still have shock. It doesn't mean I- Oh, well, can you lift it a little? There we go. Perfect. It's a yeah. circle. So that means that you go back and forth. It's the COVID Krebs cycle. All right. COVID Krebs cycle. Maybe I can trademark that. I don't know if that's a, that's a thing, but it sounds like it should be a thing. So the COVID Krebs cycle in the center is small solutions. Small solutions. So what are some small solutions Dentally speaking, let's put aside reading books and drinking wine and wearing sweatpants and, and, and doing those things. Let's put about dentally speaking, the teledentistry platform, looking into that to connect with your patients. Is there a way to bill patients for limited oral exams to keep some revenue coming in? I don't know. You might not bill them at all. You might bill them. JFO, just find out. Training for when you get back. This is what I believe is going to be very important. I've always been a big person 
big dentist talking to patients, getting more work, fewer people. I've said this for years. As dentistry goes on, we're going to do more dental work on fewer patients. When we come back and we have fewer patients, what are you doing with your downtime to strengthen your communication skills? And it doesn't have to be just in dental seating. Gary V podcast, one of the person who I admire and how he communicates. Dental Nacho C that we have on communication, not just from Paul, but from other people. Uh, other platforms, the Paul Homilies, the Chris Phelps of the world. One of the things we're doing, if you're sitting there and you're a dentist and you like a challenge, because I know my dentist, you like a challenge, you like to compete with each other, but you, you are not working right now, so you can compete with yourself. We have, ten, for $10, we have 14 courses, 16.5 hours. If you finish the challenge, like uh, from anyone see the great outdoors, I'm really dating myself with the, with the, uh, the big 96 ounce steak. If you finish the challenge, Amanda will send you a $100 nacho gift card to get more on-demand CE. If you email her, I finished the nacho CE challenge, plus it must be awesome to work for Paul. You don't add that second part in, she does not give you, give you the $100 card. And we just added a team challenge. So your team, hygienist, assistants, front desk, we put together five courses for five bucks for seven days. And if they complete that challenge, whether you buy it for them or buy it for themselves, they will get a $50 nacho gift card. So during this time, challenging yourself is important. I did the push-up challenge. I did four push-ups. I'm good till Halloween with Daphne on my back. But those are two cool things we have going on right now to kind of start to get yourself ready with small solutions for when you get back to your office. Also small solutions of teledentistry, staying connected with your patients. I talked about yesterday, um, I plan to do a, uh, like a video with the moderator. Uh, at some point, maybe we'll both be in our pajamas. Not hard to find us in our pajamas because we're in them all the time. But uh, video with the moderator being like, are you a patient of our office? And haven't flossed twice during this crisis? Well, you're home 23 hours a day. And even the moderator has flossed twice. And I'll show her being totally incompetent flossing. Something like that would be fun to connect with your patients. We had a great one the other day on Instagram. Now's the time to build your Instagram profile. Start to use it. Facebook pages. These are all ways that are going to be important to connect with patients for when we get back to dentisting, but even before we get back to that. Um, so this is perfect, guys. I uh, love being on here. We're gonna have a couple things coming up this week. I have uh, uh, a, a talk with David Rice, who's from Ignite DDS, a great guy. On Friday morning, I'm giving another CE course uh, with the ACT group. Ariel can put that in the, in the uh, comments. What else is on our agenda, Ariel or Amanda, that I'm missing? We have um, every day at 12 p.m. Eastern, we are hosting CE on the TV. So it is self-study CE that you can get for free. And we have different courses every day. Yet tomorrow we have legal, non-legal stuff with Rob Montgomery. On Friday, we have um, occlusion in one hour with Dr. Carl Steinberg. And then Saturday and Sunday are to be determined. And then we have some guests coming on um, the Q&A, which we host daily as well at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. So um, you can join us. We're going to have the same recurring link for every 3.30 session, some guests on certain days, guests on not other days. Um, so just kind of stay tuned and keep up with the emails. Awesome for that. And we have one last question about how do you know when you're being too emotional about keeping your staff on payroll, even you can afford it. Here's the thing. You have to think about more than just the team. This is what I said to my um, brother last night. Think of your team like one of my favorite things, pizza. And think of all those expenses. And people have 20 to 25% payroll, but then they have other expenses. Now, of course, some of those other expenses, the slices, take them off and throw them away. Maybe you're not going to buy any supplies this month, but there's still other expenses in your office. And when there is a, a tool to take care of those other expenses, like unemployment, it may be the best decision, but I totally recommend you talking to your financial advisor and being open to information from someone who's not emotionally invested in your life. Because you might think, I want to pay my team for the next four weeks, and then you can't get that money back, but your team could have been on unemployment. It's such a challenging scenario, but that doesn't mean don't pay your team. Maybe you have two team members and you, you have a fund for this. That doesn't mean don't pay them. Each office is going to be different. Talk to your tax professionals, your financial planners, your advisors, but prepare for a long downtime. If you prepare for longer downtime and it's shorter, so I do this at my CE courses. I know dentists, some people said, why don't we let dentists make a good decision? They can make a good decision on their own. Oh yeah, I've had to threaten dentists not to give them CE credit if they didn't sit down from a break to so take your course scones and sit down, Bob, and we gotta get the course started again. So dentists are not always the best rule followers out there. So what I want to share is, I'll say is, the C is going to be over at six, and if it's over at five, they love it. 
if it's over at 601, people want to start to riot. I don't know why. So if you plan for a longer downtime for all your expenses and it's shorter, great. If it is as long as that, you're prepared. So I, I would uh, do that. So thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Todd, for jumping on here and, uh, and contributing. Thanks to all you guys on here as well. Uh, we're going to jump off, jump off Facebook Live area. We'll leave the chat up here for a second. Okay. And I am going to stop my video. I'll leave you guys the chat up here. And I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Stay safe, stay home, stop the spread. We're all in this together. Thank you.